everybody, welcome down to Carter's Golf. Welcome to what is going to be described as a really hard shot. Okay, so I teach a lot of chipping. We've got a fantastic facility down here at the Golf Academy, and we do a lot of chipping, a lot of pitching, but lots of different types of techniques. I don't believe that there's just one way of chipping and pitching. There are different types of shots that we need to play, whether we kind of go relatively stiff wristed or we try to use the bounce or we try to use as much loft as we can to get over an obstacle. And that last example is exactly what this shot is right now. So to talk you through the shot from the ball, we've got a bunker in right in the middle of flag and ball. But also the, where the flag is positioned, we're going, to more, we're going to almost be landing this ball onto the back of the bunker and it's going to release down. It's, this ball needs to come out with height, it needs to land soft, it needs to have some spin, it needs to be executed absolutely perfectly or it's going into the bunker. Now, there's obviously a couple of ways you can approach this shot. If you're a, if you're a higher handicapper, let's say we're on the pot, we actually are on a par three, you've hit your first shot, you've gone over the back of the green, and if you've got a shot hole, if you play off 18, you can just knock it onto the green, to the fat part of the green, and try and get your two putts for your bogey. However, you've also got to still be careful that when you are chipping onto the green from here, you need to make sure that you are chipping it inside of 20 feet, because outside of 20 feet, you're, more, you're likely to three putt, which is then just gonna leave you with a double bogey anyway. So this is a difficult shot in regards, just for, I say, kind of laying up for your bogey, but it's really, really difficult shot for making your par. So I'm going to talk you through the, the setup fundamentals and the in-swing fundamentals of how we're going to achieve the, the aggressive shot. We're going to add height and we're going to get that nice, soft landing, I hope. All right, so first things first, we need loft. Okay, so if you've got a lob wedge, this is going to be the, this is going to be the time to use it. If you've got a sand wedge, I was always told that if you can chip well, you only need a sandwich. That's why I use a lob wedge. So, <laughs> lob wedge, as much loft as you've got in hand, I wouldn't suggest opening the club face when you're on the fairway because the grass is so much tighter and if that bounce kind of comes into the ground a little bit too, too much, so to speak, it's going to bounce into the ground, it's potentially going to bounce into the middle of the ball and that's where you get those thin shots over the side of the green. It's also important to know what type of club head you have. Obviously, you've got, I use the bokeh, which gives you a different range of heads and also loft, uh, loft and bounces as well. So it's important to know that if you've got a low bounce lob wedge, then you probably can open the club face a little bit. If you've got a higher bounce lob wedge, which the majority of golfers do have, somewhere between 10, 12 and 14, you really can't open the club face. So you, but you do have 60 degrees of loft to play with, so that's plenty. So I'm not even going to open the club face for this shot. Now, this is a, it's a tricky shot. Like I said, we've got the bunker to go over. What I'm going to try and do, I'm going to put the ball position a bit further forward in my stance. So as I come through, that's going to help me shallow out the angle. I don't I want to hit down on the ball, but I don't need to come in too steep. If I come in too steep with the lob wedge, notice how my hands are ahead of the ball. If my hands get ahead of the ball, I'm going to de-lock the club face. It's going to come out lower and then it's going to release as it lands as well. So one of the key things we've got here is making sure that the club face, the foot, the club face position is in line with the front foot and the hands are in line with the left thigh. Once I've got my hands in line with the left thigh, that's going to encourage me then to get the loft on the club face. And one thing I like to try and do is when you've hit this particular shot, look at the follow through. I want to see that club face pointing back at your body. I don't want to see the club face rotating. We don't want the toe of the club to start turning, if you're around the golfer, turning to the left. We don't want the face to be closing. We're trying to come through. We've got 90, 60 degrees of loft, and we're going to try and maintain that loft even after the shot. So what you will notice in comparison to a lot of other golf shots, your wrists are going to work slightly differently. They're not going to, they're not going to rotate, or they're not going to re-hinge on the way through. They're going to work this way, they're all at the back of the lead hand's almost going to work backwards and it's going to bring that club face back to you to point back at you. So the club, that's going to give us more height, it's going to give us more loft, it's also going to give us a lot more spin. That looked pretty good actually. This, this type of technique is using the bounce because once that club comes down then the bounce of the club will go into the ground but we've not opened it. So if we've not opened it we don't have as much bounce. The bounce of the club is going to go through the grass, it's 
So you see that I'm hitting grass here, but I'm not using my lead nedge because if it was the lead nedge, it would be digging. I'm using the bounce to bring up the grass and the club face. And all I'm going to try and do with the club face is maintain the lock. That first shot looked quite good. I obviously can't see it from here. Loads of loft, loads of high. Oh, 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 bunker. <laughs> good shot that as well. It came off too high. Played it too well. Okay, so you can kind of see you've got to start learning distance, but distance control as well. But it came out the middle of the club face. It was a good shot, just a bit too short. You've got to have, obviously, with this the difficulty level of the shot, I've got to try and land it just over the bunker so it catches that down slope. Loads of loft. Pretty soft landing, and I think again that was pretty solid. So you kind of see that the, you're making a couple of setup manipulations again. Back of the stance, hands forwards go low the loft. Front of the stance, hands don't move relative to your left foot, your left knee. The, the hands are always pretty much inside that left thigh for every single chip shot you play. The difference is how it's going to affect the launch conditions of the golf shot. Okay, the club face is in line with the lead foot. What you might notice here, I've also got my left foot kind of flared open as well. What that's going to do is going to prevent me from pushing too much weight onto my back foot. It's going to prevent me from rotating too much onto my back foot. And it's going to make it a hell of a lot easier, give me a bit of a head start to make sure I rotate through the shot. Really important to make sure that we're still turning through. You might see the length of the golf swing that I'm swinging, the length of my follow through, and the the length of the amount of rotating through the shot. This is only a 20 yard shot, but I'm hitting it quite hard, so I'm hitting it quite high. So it's vital that we get the rotation through the shot. Therefore we can get loft, we can get height, we can get spin, and we can get control as well. Once the ball comes in from a higher trajectory, it's gonna land and stop a lot faster. Guys, give this a try. Very tricky golf shot to play, but massively important for you to help lower scores but also even avoid trying to be too safe and lead into double bogeys. Guys, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tip. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I promise you it does make a massive, massive difference. That's why we always ask. Also follow me on social media platforms. We've got Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. But from a beautiful Dubai morning, see you again very soon.